In this video, I'm going to give you a secret strategy for becoming a highly paid blockchain developer because a lot of developers get this wrong. I mean, a lot. You know, I've seen this problem from multiple angles. I've worked a regular developer job. You know, I've been a freelancer and I've also been an employer who hires developers. I mean, in fact, I just hired somebody on my blockchain bootcamp. And here's what I've learned through all that experience is that most developers are good at one thing, right? They're good at coding. That's it. And that's okay for a lot of people. I mean, some people are able to get by on this. But if you're struggling or you're brand new or you want to increase the odds that you're actually going to get one of those jobs, then you need to be strategic. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in this video. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so one of the reasons I got the idea to make this video is I saw this comment on one of my older videos, and I want to read it here today, okay? And I'm going to make this anonymous because I don't want to pick on this person. We'll just call him John. So John says, I became a certified blockchain developer from, I'm not going to say the name of the place, and despite that and 30 plus years of experience as a software engineer, I still could not find work as a blockchain developer. The huge demand for blockchain developers simply is not there. All right, John, so I definitely don't want to pick on you by reading this, but I have a feeling that you're making some common mistakes and that you can be helped by this strategy that I'm going to lay out here in a second. I'm sure you're a great developer if you have 30 years of experience and you, like a lot of other developers, might be really good at coding, but maybe not necessarily these other things. All right. And so what are these common mistakes that a lot of developers make? Well, one of them is relying too much on credentials. You know, people ask me all the time, do I need to become like a certified developer? And John even mentioned that he had a blockchain developer certification. But the truth is that like most people who hire you are not going to care that much about your credentials. They're going to care about what you can do. And sure, the credentials might be a reflection of that, but there's actually a lot more that you can do to prove to them that you're going to be valuable. And I'll talk about that with the strategy. One is unrelated experience. All right. And you might have a lot of uh, professional software development experience, or maybe even a lot of good, just professional experience if you're a brand new developer, but that doesn't always matter so much to somebody when they want to hire you as a blockchain developer. Another could be that you're looking for jobs in the wrong places. Uh, you might just be banking on one opportunity rather than, you know, trying to look for a bunch of different opportunities. You know, that happens a lot. People look for, you know, be one, two, three jobs and then they don't work out and they say, oh, you know, this just doesn't work. The market's not there. Like this is impossible. And then they boom, you know, give up. That's the next thing. They give up way too early. They don't stay in the game long enough. And a lot of developers completely ignore their web presence, which can really hurt them, especially if they're looking for jobs in the wrong places. And these are some really common mistakes, John. Uh, and you might be making all these mistakes. In fact, you know, some of you watching this video might be making some of these mistakes as well. And I want to show you a different way to do things that will greatly increase the likelihood that you'll actually land one of these jobs and avoid all these mistakes entirely. Because a lot of people just think that they need a resume and they need to go to a job website like, you know, Indeed or Monster.com or something like that. And then just like, you know, spray their resume and apply to a bunch of different places. But then they just never hear back or maybe they don't get the job. And then they get frustrated and want to give up or conclude that like, hey, this is not going to work. Like the market's not right. But I want to show you a different way. OK, so I mean, this way can work. You know, you might have good results with this. But here's a different way. So this new way is different, all right? And this is really kind of like some ninja stuff that's not apparent to most developers, okay? Because a lot of people are stuck on this way of just like applying for jobs and you know trying to get here back and they never get it. And they're making all these kinds of mistakes, okay? But I'll tell you this much. I've never personally applied for a job head on with a resume like the old school way and gotten it, okay? I've always done it differently through organic means, all right? And I've, like I said, I've seen this problem from multiple angles. As a regular developer working a full-time job, as a freelancer negotiating deals that way, and also as an employer who hires developers Developers. And it's not just me who's done it. I've helped other people do it too. So what does it look like and how can you get started? So it really just boils on to four main steps. All right. So first is identifying the skills the market wants, mastering these skills, building the presence to prove that you can do these, and then pursuing organic outreach. And I've talked about some of these for, on my channel before for sure, but they do bear repeating. But I'm going to drill down on these last two pieces to offer some critical insight today. So let's start with the first step of identifying the skills. 
And what you want to do here is like determine what does the market actually want? Like what's in demand? And if you want to take a massive shortcut, you can just watch this YouTube channel because the skills that I focus on this channel are in high demand. So many people are looking to hire Ethereum developers, you know, Solidity, JavaScript, React, all that kind of stuff. But going beyond that, like you may want to work for some specific companies or maybe you want to find a specific specialty or something like that. Then what you can do is literally just do some market research, go to company web pages, look at the different skills that they're hiring for and see, you know, what comes up the most. Or if there's a specific company you want to work at, you can go look at their job postings and see the exact skills they're hiring for. Okay, so once you've got that information, you definitely need to master these skills. As always, you need to have the skills to pay the bills. You know, like I said, if you watch this channel, this might be a review, but it bears repeating, all right? So you want to learn these skills and the whole goal is to get your skills good enough to where you can be hired, all right? And so you need to identify what that sort of goal is for you, depending on your skill level, your past experience. And like, so if you're already a developer and you want to transition into blockchain, then you want to get your skills up to that level where you can handle that job. Or maybe if you're a brand new coder and you just want to get your foot in the door somewhere, then you just need to build your skills up to the level where someone can hire you and then ultimately train you on the job. And for new developers or people who are just new to blockchain, then I highly recommend building some sort of real world project unguided. You know, I've said this over and over on my YouTube channel, but portfolio is key, all right? Because it is a few things. One, it solidifies your learning. So when you're trying to get those new skills, everything kind of comes together when you bump into walls and have to figure things out for yourself. All right. It's going to give you skills that you need in the workplace, which is basically becoming a self-learner. All right. And then it's also going to give you something that you can use to show other people that you have the exact skills that they're looking for. And that goes back to this whole idea of like, you know, having the right skills, because if you have, you know, 10 years of experience with, I don't know, like Java, for example, but this company needs you to have specific blockchain skills, you might get beat by a candidate who has less experience, but the exact skills that they're looking for. And so that's why it's really vital to identify the exact skills and then learn those skills before you go on the job hunt. All right. So the next thing is you want to build an online presence. Okay. And this doesn't have to be some epic like thing. At a minimum, you want a GitHub page with some code. You want a social media account that's active and some sort of landing page that sells you as a developer. So the online presence has a couple things. All right. It, it really does the heavy lifting for you. So here's why. I mean, ultimately it builds authority. So if you have, you know, a GitHub profile that looks like a Christmas tree, like your, you know, your commit history, all that kind of stuff, and it shows that you've like actually built real code, then other people can just look at the code that you've done and say, oh, this person knows what they're talking about. And if you have, you know, a web page that does a really good job of pitching you, you know, it presents you in a really nice way, then it's sort of like this extra layer that warms people up before you even have a real conversation with them. And then lastly, that social media presence gives you a way to start having an organic conversation conversations with people before you like actually try to land a job with them. It's a way for you to connect with people. And it's also sort of a top of the funnel type of thing where they can, you know, come through and like click through your profile, see what you can do, and then validate your authority that way. It'll really open a lot of doors. And all of that will ultimately aid you in this organic outreach. All right. So this is really what I want to drill down on because this is the big counterintuitive part that a lot of developers miss. So what do I mean by organic outreach? Well, basically it's a different strategy than the one I talked about before where people basically like go to job posting websites or they go to job, you know, they go to companies directly and they submit their resume and they never hear back. Maybe they don't get the job, whatever. Organic outreach is different. It's about trying to make a relationship with an employer before you actually ask for the job. And in some cases, like the employer just might offer to hire you before you even ask for a job. So let me give you some ideas on what organic outreach might look like. But that's one of the reasons I spent so much time like talking talking about those previous things is that those are prerequisites before you even try to have organic outreach. Because if you don't have the skills, uh, you don't have any kind of presence, then this last step doesn't even make any sense. All right. So one way is to go to in-person meetups. I know that's a little tricky right now in 2020, but this is probably one of the best offline ways to do organic outreach. So basically meetups are where developers get together and talk about you know their specific technology. I got my very first work as a freelancer by going to meetups when I was first started. I just did a video on my channel recently with Cosimo who uh, got his first blockchain developer job after after two months after doing the boot camp, when he started going to meetups. So this really works. It's really about going to these meetups, making connections with people, talking to them, telling them what you can do. And sometimes an employer might just say, hey, you know, this person is not working. Maybe they'll work for us. That's basically how it worked for me. And that's how it's worked for a lot of other people too. So another way is like networking on social media. So if you get on Twitter or something like that and follow companies in the space, a lot of times they'll just talk about how they need to hire people. So I've retweeted this a lot on my channel, or sorry, on my Twitter account. You know, it's like, who wants a blockchain job? Here's an example. You know, who wants a blockchain job? Here's an example. Another example, right? I'm 
I've been doing this like multiple times per week. And so if you develop that online presence, you know, you have your portfolio, you have a social media account, you're in a really good position to start conversations with these people, right? If you have all that stuff, the heavy lifting is mostly done. You can say, boom, here's my portfolio. Look, I'm awesome. And then it might just be a little bit of work before you can land a job that way. So another way is leveraging GitHub, all right? And there's a few different ways you can do this. You can find open source projects and make contributions, um, you know, and then build up your credibility that way. But another thing is just like looking at companies who you might want to work for and just like opening pull requests in their repositories with maybe like suggested features or like just fix something. And I, you'd be surprised at how much... uh how many doors that can possibly open. I mean, even if it's something as simple as like figuring out that their readme is out of date or something like that, you could literally just clone the repository, like fix their readme, you know, improve their documentation. You gave them a little bit of value and you'd be surprised what conversations that can start. And if you connect that back to your social media accounts, them seeing, you know, who you are and trying to open those conversations, then that could lead to a job. All right. And another possibility is direct outreach. So you might find the company email address. You might find some other social media account and literally just saying, Hey, you know, I want to work for you. But what you really want to focus on is providing some sort of value. That's kind of what the GitHub example about was about was like, you know, giving value first before you try to ask for something in return. Um, so this direct outreach may be to like another developer on the team. And then maybe they talk to their hiring manager on your behalf. But sometimes it's about just reaching out to really important people, but you want to find a way to get their attention so they'll notice you. So I'm going to pull up an example here. Uh, this is from uh, the CEO of Gumroad. So if you're not familiar with that, it's a really popular site uh, for content creators. And he has this great Twitter thread, which I'll put a link to down in the description below. Um, but I'll just go through this. He says, how to get a dream job at your dream company. So research the company, use the product, find the CEO's email online, write a personable and specific email relaying your experience, suggest some ideas, report a bug, or include a small UX improvement. And so he just gives examples of like emails that did this and it worked, you know, for him. They, they sent him emails and he hired these people. So here's one, here's one, here's one. All right. So I'll go through this strategy in detail. Like you can just click the link down below, read these tweets for yourself. But, you know, this is an example of this strategy working for other jobs, not just developers. And it definitely will work for developers too. All right. So those are some different ways that you can pursue organic outreach. This is not a comprehensive list. These are just some ideas to get your, uh, you know, get, get creative, all right? You, know, you might come up with some uh, better ideas for sure, but first and foremost, you know, you need these other things before you even try this step. You need to get the right skills, figure out what they are, build that presence, and then pursue these, you know, organic outreach methods. And finally, I'll say this, like when you try this, don't give up, all right? This is not a like overnight success sort of thing. Like you might have to try this for a while before it will work, but there's no reason to think that like if you do all all these things over some reasonable period of time that you can have some sort of reasonable outcome, okay? The real trick is here is just sticking with it and staying in the game long enough for it to work because it will work. I mean, trust me, like I said, I've done it myself. I've helped lots of other people do this too. It's not just for senior developers with like 10 plus years of experience. It's also worked for junior developers too. You watch, you should watch the video I did with Ben on how he got his first blockchain job with zero coding experience. You know, he was a brand new developer, learned blockchain, had a little bit of experience, started going to these meetups and he got hired that way as well. All right, so that's an overview on the sort of the secret strategy on how to land a blockchain job. This is different than how most people think, but it's the one that I've done over and over again. I've helped other people do the exact same. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to get started learning those skills today so that you can implement this strategy for yourself, because again, the very first step is identifying the skills and, you know, learning those skills. So you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're just like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. All right. And you want to take that next step and really master these skills on a professional level and build a portfolio piece that you can use, uh, you know, for your portfolio to implement this strategy. Then I can show you how to do that. You know, head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. I've had lots of people go through that program who have gone on to employ these strategies. I've hired people out of this program. It really works. All right. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.